Hey everyone, it's Dave. Welcome back to the channel. Today I wanted to take stock of my portfolio and its performance over the last month or two, see what stocks are performing well, what stocks are performing bad, talk about the recent trades I've made in the market, and uh, where I think it, things might go from here. By the way, I decided to go old school here and bring back my previous intro for one day only. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed that throwback if you've been around since the beginning. So a few uh, disclaimers before I do this. First of all, I always like to say, you know, I don't claim to be the absolute expert in all things. I just kind of share my research and my journey as I'm learning about investing in these companies. And uh, I definitely do make mistakes. I'm not, you know, here telling you I am the guy with all the answers by any means. So keep that in mind. And the second thing is there is a referral link to my broker if you are looking for a trading platform. I use interactive brokers. I do find it's pretty good. They've got low fees on trades, low fees on margins and that kind of thing. Also, before we dive into my account, I hope you'll consider subscribing by the end of this video. If you haven't already, uh, every subscriber very much appreciated and uh, very happy with how the channel has been going over the last month or so. So thank you guys so much if you have already subscribed. With that out of the way, let's dive into my portfolio and what I think about the markets. All right, guys, of course, we are starting with Rocket Lab, and it's definitely been a rough few months. We, again, had a great run going all the way up to $8 per share, which I did thoroughly enjoy. Hope you guys enjoyed it, too. And now we've been cut in half, basically, all the way down to $4 per share. So uh, what I was thinking lately on Rocket Lab was that... I mean, it wouldn't shock me if it stayed around these levels for a little while longer. Personally, I don't see it dropping below 3.8, which is the kind of support level that has been established. It's never dropped below that level. Uh, if you zoom out longer term, you can really see it's bounced off around these levels several times, around $3.8, $4. So I feel like it's kind of settled, and hopefully we'll get some sort of catalyst that will you know make the stock move back up and we'll start to see those big jumps again it's kind of funny if you really look at it rocket lab it's just got all these big jumps back down to four jumps back down to four and of course i started playing those in terms of short-term investments uh, we'll get to that in a minute let me know down in the comments though if you think we could be in store for uh, breaking through to all-time lows personally i don't see it happening especially after we've received the news that they are able to return to flight with uh, the electron the only real reason i could have seen that happening was if there was like some massive systemic problem and electron would take forever to get launching again so uh, that was kind of my thought process for how the stock has been going lately. Clearly rough times, but maybe there's some opportunity here. And then I did want to share with you guys a few trades I've made this month. I did mention them briefly in previous videos, but I always like to share the screenshots when I make a trade so you know like I'm really doing it and uh, putting my money where my mouth is. So uh, I did add another thousand shares, and this is actually interesting because I always I long term I set my target for 10,000 shares and I did hit that a while back before that recent run up to eight and I thought I was done I really did uh, not plan on adding any more now it's not my whole portfolio uh, we'll get into that in a minute but you know it's a decent chunk of change 10,000 shares at a cost basis of around 4.5 but I saw the opportunity here to lower my cost basis. I saw a lot of other people talking about adding shares themselves, and I guess I, I got caught by the bug. I didn't want to miss out. Saw viewers, you know, passing me in share count. I've always got a competitive streak on me, so um, probably not still caught up to a few of you, but I did add 1,000 shares, 400 and 600. So that helps to lower my cost basis as well uh, as, you know, obviously increase my share count. I did say that I was open to adding more shares if it's lowering my cost basis as opposed to raising it. So, um, you know, pretty happy. It's not, not nothing. It's $4,200. I had to sh sell shares of another company because I have no just free cash sitting around. So definitely harder when you don't have, you know, money waiting to deploy and you have to 
think about the other company in the transaction, which was for me, Apple, I decided to sell. I've just not been seeing the innovation from them. It's more like an iterative company I find now instead of innovative. So I did sell some of my Apple shares. Anyway, now I'm up to 11,000. Cost basis has come down a little bit. Obviously it did continue to drop further. So I could have gotten a lower, you know, a lo lower cost trade but you know you can never time it perfectly i'm still happy with these buys let me know if you have added more shares in this recent downturn as well always interested to hear so um this one is what i call the going full baboon trade <laughs> and uh what i actually did was buy some call options on a short-term basis this is the one thing where i say you know, it's like, do what I say, not what I do. I, I don't recommend to anyone to actually do this. It's extremely high risk. I just do it with small amounts of money for fun. This ended up costing me about, I believe, $170. I actually tried to buy more shares. I think I had an order in for 20, but for some reason, or options, I should say, I, but only 11 got triggered. So not massive amounts of money. Uh, this is the January 19th of 2024 strike date and the uh, value is $6. So I'm hoping not to hold this to fruition. I did do this once before or twice before with Rocket Lab shares buying a call option around $4 range where I feel like it's bottomed out and it's got room for a, a big run. Um, just for fun, a little bit of a degenerate gambler in me. And, uh, you know, this is a trade where you're likely to either go to completely zero or really double your money. Um, not a lot of middle ground here, not very safe. But look, look at this chart, right? So when Rocket Lab was trading higher, uh, these options and obviously there's a time decay value to, as well in play here so i don't expect it to go back to two dollars but when rocket lab was trading higher these options were two dollars per option now they're down to 14 cents is where i bought uh, might be a hair lower now but you know even a jump to five in a reasonable amount of time uh, I think you can see at least a, a double, if not more. And so, yeah, it, it's a gamble. It's for fun. It did work out for me last time. So the way I look at it is I'm only using my winnings from the last round. I'm not really risking any new money in this. And uh, I keep it small because I know it's high risk. I may very well lose everything. So I was thinking that one of the potential catalysts that would really move the stock for this trade was the announcement that Rocket Labs that Electron would return to flight. That announcement did happen. And Rocket Lab did have a couple pretty decent days after that. Uh, the market was down big during those days and Rocket Lab kind of defied gravity and was in the green. But overall, it hasn't moved much. And uh, you know that's one potential catalyst down. So things aren't looking too great for this trade right now. There's still time, but I would say um, it's looking less in my favor right now than when I pulled the trigger on that. So we'll, we'll wait and see. This may be the time that I lose my full 150. And if I do, hey, that's the price of the entertainment, I guess. Uh, we still do have some potential catalysts. We could get some good news in the earnings coming up. We could have a full reused Electron booster or maybe nine reused engines. And, uh, you know, could be any number of things that can move the stock. So we'll wait and see on this one. Definitely not one I'm telling you all to go and do, that's for sure. And of course, my Tesla. I know none of you guys or most of you guys are not really interested in that because you're not really Tesla investors, but it is also a larger por part of my portfolio. So I, so I just want to mention it because it, you know, it's a big factor in the poor performance of my portfolio over the last month. They did have bad earnings. And I, I will admit the last quarter's earnings results were disappointing. They weren't great in my mind. Uh, I hate the almost cult-like status some investors tie to their stocks where they say no matter what, they'll say things were good and they won't admit anything's ever bad. So yeah, I think if Rocket Lab has a really bad quarter, I, I hope I will call it out and I hope you guys will admit it too. And if they have a really good quarter, I hope you'll call it out and I will too. And we can all be, you know, objective about these things. So yes, I own Tesla. Yes, I thought it had a bad quarter. It probably did deserve to drop and it did drop quite substantially. 
It was trading around 270, now all the way to 197. This really hurts for my portfolio as well, so another reason I'm having a rough time. Okay, three-year performance chart. This is the bulk of my investments, not all of it though. I do have a different retirement savings account that um, mostly has safer stuff in it, mostly uh, ETFs, dividend payers, stuff like that. So this is the main section of my portfolio though. And, uh, you know, overall, I'm still okay with the results. This is obviously three years, and overall, it's been a pretty rough three years for the stock market. I think we can all agree we've had a rough time since probably 2021, especially anyone investing in growth and tech and space. They're all susceptible to high interest rates, and all, this environment has been absolutely horrible. And by the way, going back to that Rocket Lab trade, um, one of the reasons I don't recommend people do these short-term trades is because the company can be executing perfectly, and then just the macro market can really sink the ship. You know, if everything was getting dragged down the past few days, and I think that could happen here. So, you know, even if your company executes on the short term, Jerome Powell can just decide to jack up the interest rates another 25 basis points and you're done. Anyway, uh, back to the three-year chart. Uh, we can see I'm sitting a little over 40%, I think 42%, maybe 44%, something like that right now on a three-year basis. Uh, not bad, really. You think about uh, ETFs, you can probably expect maybe a 6-7% annually. So we're doing pretty good in what has been pretty rough markets. I am down on Rocket Lab, one of my bigger companies that I do own, and obviously Tesla's had a rough time lately. We can see not that long ago I was up 80%. Those were some nice times. And um, that's why I do have a safe side of my portfolio where I really helps me to ride out the ups and downs because this volatility coming from the volatile side of the portfolio extremely difficult. So with that in mind, I just figured I'd share some info from the safe side of my portfolio. I don't talk about as much because it's not as interesting. I get a lot of comments saying, Dave, if you're so bullish on Rocket Lab, why aren't you 100% all in on them? Why isn't that whole, why isn't that your whole portfolio? And well, everyone's different. You all have to decide your own risk tolerance. You all have to decide when you think you'll need money because a company like Rocket Lab, I do absolutely regard it as a long-term investment. If you're going to invest in it, any money that you're going to need within the next year or two, probably not a good idea because who knows how long it'll take to really move. If you can afford to leave that money in five years, 10 years, absolutely. I think it's a great investment. Me personally, I have a wedding coming up I have to pay for. That's a lot of money. Probably going to have to buy a house coming up. That's a lot of money. So I do want to have some stuff on the side that's safer, that I think can be liquidated reasonably uh, safely and doesn't have that volatility. And also, you know, it just gives you a bit of a warm fuzzy when you see those dividends flowing into your account every month. So this is a list of some of the dividends I've received this year. Uh, a lot of these are ETFs, uh, kind of hold the whole market or banks or stuff like that. We have ZBK, those are banks. Uh, Brookfield Renewable, that's a renewable ETF I do hold. Vun is a kind of whole stock market, I think minus maybe the whole United States or the whole world minus United States, one of those two. And then we have BCE, a great telecom company in Canada, pays like a 5% plus dividend. RBNK here pays a 5% plus dividend, Canadian banks. And, uh, you know, I, these just continue to flow in. I, uh, I did get more of them, so I did receive probably around... Uh, $5,000 in dividends and uh, it's just dependable income. It's just nice to have. It's not going to make you rich, but it, it helps me psychologically ride out those wild swings. And hey, if you can ride out the swings 100% invested in a company like Rocket Lab, like Tesla, good for you. I'm not going to say whether you're right or wrong. There's a good chance you'll outperform me in the long run. Um, everyone's different and we all have our different thought processes are different strategies risk tolerances and when we'll need to you know sell basically so um yeah that's kind of how i'm thinking about the markets obviously i do really hope rocket lab's going to move up in the coming days if it moves down i'm not completely opposed to adding more we'll have to wait and see um 
it's always very tempting at these levels below 4.5. I always get very tempted to add more, but the money's got to come from somewhere. You know, I sold Apple. Uh, I could sell a few other companies. I don't like to uh, sell my safe side. So basically, as I started my investing journey, I set up the safe side first because I wasn't confident. I didn't know as much about investing. Uh, and I really just put the money there. And as I got more adventurous and had some stocks that performed very well for me, that I just kind of continue to put the new money in that side. And that's kind of been my strategy going forward. It's worked pretty well. Uh, I've had pretty good returns over the last five plus years. And um, yeah, the portfolio is doing extremely well. Hopefully we can keep that up with Rocket Lab, some of these other companies over the next few years. Let me know how your portfolio has been doing over the past couple of years. If you haven't already, please hit that like button. Please hit that subscribe button. I know this may not be the most exciting video for some of you all, not any uh, new news with Rocket Lab or any other companies, but I do like to share my thoughts about the markets, share my thoughts about my portfolio. Um, yeah, and let me know. I really do hope, by the way, uh, another point that Jerome Powell's done raising rates in the market because that's really hitting, I think, Tesla. It's hitting a lot of other growth companies. Um, hopefully, if we get news that they're for sure done, that'll be good. And down the line, it won't be soon. But when they do start cutting rates again, I think that's when the good times will really start to roll for hopefully all of us base and growth investors. Hope you have a great day, guys. I will see you in the next video. Bye for now.